Session 11 of Curse of Strahd. Oh my gosh, what a whirlwind. All, we're all over the place, people. Party is split, and I don't think they've ever... Actually, this is true. The party's been split, and they have not yet came together since entering the city. Insane. They entered the city. They were in the city. They did some stuff. They split up, and they went their own ways, and then they kind of converged back together at a bar. Then Lars got arrested. Then, and since then, it's just been... They've been all over. The party has not been reunited once, still to right now. So, let me, let me, let me, let me, I just finished the session just now. I'm walking in here to film this for you guys. Wow. All right. So a quick timeout for myself. Uh, these, the, uh, the whole thing, I, I film all of these uh, and I, I, I put them on my Patreon. All patrons get access to these videos. What I'm about to show you as well on this Dungeon Masters uh, binder right here is this is my Dungeon Master binder, which has all of my individual specific session notes along with all Curse of Strahd and the entire uh, uh, Curse of Strahd, every single location, all the way, every single thing in the game. So anyway, uh, we're going to talk about the next session right now because where we're at. But usually how I do these is what I thought was going to happen and then what ends up happening. I can't even do that this time because what I thought was going to happen is they were going to free Lars. And as soon as they free Lars, then they're going to be back together and then we're going to play normal D&D. &D. <laughs> it's so far, nope. At some points, they have had all five players doing five different things. And overall, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I am, this time, I'm going to send out individual messages to each player and, and, and check in with them. I'm going to do a player check-in because I think things are going well. I, I really do my damnedest to try and make sure I, I hit on everybody and make sure to keep people popping in, which may or may not increase the amount that they're in, engaged because like when it's just them, it's just you and you can't like hide behind a group type situation. So, um, where do I start? Uh, we'll start where it all went down. So how I had my, my session notes set up is I had out of prison scenes for the group that was not in prison. And then I had in prison scenes for Lars, the bard who got arrested, right? Um, so I I'd had less prison scenes than out of prison scenes. And I actually had to chop this because uh, Felix's character, the rogue, Felix the rogue, was going to miss this session. Dear God, I'm, I'm glad they didn't because they were involved with a lot of stuff and the whole thing would have gone way differently if they hadn't have done that. Uh, but they were able to show up, so that scene didn't have to happen. So anyway, I was going to have them get kidnapped and all this other kind of stuff. I talked with the player one-on-one -on -one beforehand because I like to, if a player misses a session, I like to have an in-game thing as to why, but not always. All right, anyway, I give the player the option to choose. Uh, so uh, the first out of the prison scene I had was Vasily von Holtz. And again, this is the spoilers are, are said here in in these in these videos. I say spoilers, so <clears throat> if you don't want to know them and you just want to watch the the videos on Patreon and you don't want to hear these things, la la la. Vasily von Holtz is Strahd, right? So, <clears throat> sorry, uh, Vasily von Holtz is the secret identity of Strahd von Zarevich, right? So. Uh, that's a problem because uh, Vasily uh, is going to come into the picture here in a second. So if I can uh, uh, do this in all in order, uh, the prison scene, uh, he got to meet Isaac Strozny, which is a very important situation. Um, he met Isaac and then got slammed into a wall. And it was a it was a rough experience for um, for little old Lars here, the bard in the prison. Uh, and then he got sent down to I, I wanted them to introduce this to Isaac. I wanted them to see like this head of the guard type situation and like set the tone for him in some ways. I, I think I have done a good job at setting up a lot of characters in Velaki so that they have some people to interact with. Right. I think I've done a, a solid job of that. And then things got a little crazy. This episode really pushed me. And I and I I. I, I listened to the dice. I truly listened to the dice because I had a moment where I was like, do I go this way? Do I reveal this thing? I don't know, but we'll talk about it here in a second. So, um, because this is the behind the scenes stuff, y'all. So, um, Lars the Bard got to meet Isaac and then go down. So, that how that, that's how things went. I, I He met Isaac and then he got sent down to the interrogation chamber to talk with the Baron, uh, uh, the Burgermaster of the of Valaki. And then I went to the group. So I'm bopping back and forth around from in, from Lars to the group, from Lars to the group. And then when the group starts splitting up, I start just going around the table. Uh, so uh, then I went back to the group and the group like, what are you guys doing? What are you guys doing? What are you guys doing? And then 
to now give y'all the the play by play of what's going on here is really kind of two groups and then one player goes one character goes from this group to that group and that's kind of the best way i can big picture explain it right so here we go um uh, the, uh, the the interrogation with Lars, the bard that was in prison, it went well. Uh, I really got to set the tone for the Burgermaster of being inquisitive of this magic so you can cast magic on other people and force them to do things. Interesting. So the Burgermaster is very interested in Lars uh, and is very much on his radar now. And he told Lars, in order, you're going to be in the stocks for two days and you are going to perform as the next festival. The, the next festival, you are performing at it. Da, 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 da. And the next festival is coming up very soon. Um, so, sorry. the next, Not this festival, which is coming up really soon. The festival after that, he is the main performer of. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, and I purposely left the timelines vague as a dungeon master because I don't know exactly when I want him to do this performance. I want to see what they do. And then I will make it happen at a time that works best for me. It might be a week later. It might be three days later. Who knows? I was purposely vague. So um, we'll see how that turns out. Uh, but uh, Lars got put into the stocks, right? He's in the stocks and he's there and I'd keep coming back to him every once in a while. I had some little, uh, actually I can show that here. Uh, in prison scenes, the stocks experience right here. I had some rumors to kind of share and talk about and all that kind of stuff. So there's that. Um, and then, uh, so I make sure to tap in with him every now and then. So then the, the, the paladin and the cleric, uh, really wanted to try and help uh, the children in the orphanage and there's this whole thread of the orphanage and there's that sick person that was that was trying to find the bones and the whole the whole chain of this quest is the bones of the church are missing and they have to be replaced these are holy sacred bones that give the church its power the bones of saint andrew this is the thing that creates the safety of the church they are missing they are gone that's the huge that's the biggest problem so far um they need to find them but the person who knows where they are is unconscious and they are their soul is being taken from their body milavage uh he is unconscious and his his soul is being eaten alive uh so they have to go find him so they go to try and go find or they, they know they don't have to find him he's unconscious they have to figure out why so they bring his body to the church they find out that there's some sort of demon sort of possession going on so they go back to the um they go back to the orphanage and at the orphanage they find out that there's this creepy kid there and where I ended the session for that group was there's this creepy kid at the end of the hallway and the paladin used divine sense I had her make a a charisma saving throw they got knocked backwards and they they got started getting corrupted by this 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 thing that started overtaking them and that was all improv in the moment i was not expecting any of this that was a hundred percent improv um i i was trying to see where they were going where was this story going you know what i mean um they could have walked into the orphanage and been like we're here and all this kind of stuff i rolled a d20 behind the screen and i was like how how and i did this for myself of I, I do these types of things to let the dice help me tell the story and all that kind of stuff instead of just like making all these decisions about like no they would find nothing or they just walk in and it's boring whatever so i rolled the dice and it was a natural 20 and i was like Pooh, okay the most spicy thing that could possibly happen happens and the most spiciest thing is felix the boy that is possessed by this this demon situation he is standing at the end of the hallway looking at all of them right and then pff, this thing goes off right so mm, wow right um that's where i ended the, the that half of the group is they walk in the paling gets knocked back gets sit, knocked off his feet and then boom um uh that's right into the session right there so other group um <laughs> The other group, uh, Felix the Rogue, kept he he checked back into the Blue Water Tavern, which is where spoiler alert the Were Ravens group, the spy group of the Were Ravens, that's where they are, and they um, they are oh man, uh, they are a spy network within the city, and he got uh, uh, the Rogue got kind of back in on good graces with them. Uh, which was very interesting and actually that i had to go backwards in my notes i had to go back to old notes to have old conversations that got left because they never talked about them uh i went back and they had those conversations because he was making all these roles and he was rolling really well and saying role playing really well and saying a lot of smart stuff and uh he 
re-unlocked things that had been moved on and lost left off the table so that was really cool to see that player go back there and then uh he finds out uh that his brother is in the stocks and so they got to go back and get him and he's in the stocks so they got to go check on him on the way to check on him but vasily von holtz they meet up with vasily von holtz and uh they go yeah, and they get a they get a talk with him. Vasily von Holtz, uh, he he was negotiating with like, oh, you want me to? I can I can pay his I can pay his his uh, thousand gold bond, and he can get released from the stocks. And they're like, oh my gosh, because if you remember two episodes ago, they saved Vasily von Holtz. Again, Vasily von Holtz is Strahd von Zarovich, like the the vampire, right? So this is his fake identity. Um, so they now have Vasily, who just wants to go on a date with Irina. Who's right there? There's Irina. She he wants to go on a date with Irina, and then uh, he does, and he's he offers in exchange to go on a date with Irina. He will pay a thousand gold. And that's all he asks, and he it was successful. There were dice rolled for it, and it was successful. So he goes to take her, and they leave him. Uh, they they left him alone with it, and I was I didn't know if they were going to do that or not. They left uh, Irina alone with Vasily von Holtz, and he has taken her now. Uh, and, and that moment, I didn't really know as a dungeon master. I had a thought. I was like, man, do I have him fully kidnap her or do I kind of lowball it? You know, and I, 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 I didn't really know which way it was going to kind of go. I was going to kind of let things happen as it did. He threw out some name of a restaurant that he was going to take her to. And that was about it. And nobody, the players never really questioned or interrogated how, if there was a restaurant. Like, oh, like I said, they just kind of like, okay, cool. And then they left. And I was like, all right. We'll leave that alone for now. And then uh, they're going around doing all these things. And then uh, they, 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 the guard, they, they release Lars. And then Lars finds out Lars, the bard, who's who has a uh, b- blossoming relationship with Irina. He finds out that she, she's on a date with uh, this facility guy. And he's like, no, 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 we got to go find him. So he goes to try and find him. Uh, Lars goes to back to the Blue Water Inn and meets with Rictavio, right? Again, back to this thing. I had these ex- outside encounters. Uh, I did not do the invitation letter. Things were a little bit too ca- crazy to go on with. I did the Father Petrovich, and they kept. They actually went to Father Petrovich, the leader of the church. They went to him, so I did. I talked about that and made sure it really hit about the bones. And there's a bunch of funny stuff about how. The bones are a big problem, and the players keep not trying to fix the bones. And he's like, can, I, can you fix the bones? Can you find them? Hello? So anyway, uh, Rictavio encounter was an important encounter, and I inserted this encounter into the bar with Felix. So Felix keeps going back to the Blue Water Inn, making kind of a scene. Rictavio's like, hey, I want to talk to you. Come on, come on, come, come. Share, share a drink and talk. Let's have a talk. Um, he's like a terrible Italian accent, um, fake you know, persona that Rictavio is because Rictavio, spoiler alert, is Van Richten, the vampire hunter. So there's lots of secret things going on. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay. So this was crazy. This was crazy. Um, during the session, at one point, two separate things happened. Um, Felix the Rogue was talked talked to an individual from the, the Ravens and was told the only person that might be able to save your, bro- your brother is Van Richten. And then completely separate, I didn't even realize that those two things happened in the same session, completely separate, like hours later within the session, um, uh, Felix meets Rictavio, and he's like, uh, my name's Rictavio. And he's like, are you Van Richten? I shit my pants as a dungeon master. I was like, what? Like, I did not think that he was going to point blank call out that Van Richten is Rictavio. And I... As a human being, as me myself, didn't really make the connection that Rudolph Van Richten and Rictavio, I didn't not, I mean, I, I, it obviously starts with the R and has, but I never really, I didn't think that was going to be so big of a connection that somebody would straight up in character accuse somebody of being Van Richten. So instantly I was like, ah, uh, and uh, so to try and put out that fire, he made an insight check and he rolled a 15. But you're gonna have to get higher than a 15 against Rick, against Van Richten to see his, his secret identity. So there's a little bit of a meta way in my favor where he rolled a 15, which in general is decently high, and um, 
I described like, no, like you feel like he was shocked by you saying that, you know, which he was shocked by you saying that because it's true. Uh, so I played it off well, I think. And then uh, I tried to I tried to put out the fire and redirect him in a different way because I have a fake identity. I have a fake, fake identity. So Van Richten is posing as Rick, who's posing as Rick Tavio, this very boisterous person. So I revealed the secret fake identity of Rick, a Velaki spy trying to get the bottom of what's going on in Velaki. And then he's like, oh, so I really think that I got him off my tail. And because now I reveal that Rick Tavio isn't Rick Tavio, he's actually Rick. And again, that's I, that's purposely fishy enough to where I still want that reveal to, to, to uh, be a thing. So hopefully he's off my tail on that. But then they, uh, he's talking to Rictavio and he's like, yeah, uh, what do you think about, uh, what do you think about, I, I asked him it, out of character, I said, Rictavio is going to share with you a secret just to kind of bond together, right? To, to show, to extend an olive branch of, you know, uh, this whole thing. He's like, I said, you can ask him any question about any category of information in the city and he will tell you a little secret about it, what he knows. And the one thing he asked was, tell me about the uh, Vasily. And he's like, Vasily's not a good man. And I cast a lot of shade on Vasily. And he's like, yeah, he told me we're taking you to the, the Rick's Burger Shack. And he's like, there is no such place in all of Velaki called that. And he's like, oh no. And now they, woof, they're off off to the races. He tells his brother, there's nothing. Where is she? And now they're searching for her, searching for her. And it, they narrow it down through a whole bunch of other stuff, the crazy that happened in the session. But they eventually narrow it down to three shops. One of them is the toy shop, the coffee, the coffin shop, and the uh, crystal shop, which is another shop that I added in myself. Um, and it was a crazy moment too because all these dice that kept rolling really high kept rolling really high kept finding people to lead them towards the right direction and then they they also hired a raven from the were ravens that also was looking for it and they also rolled decently well on that as well so i was like oh my gosh there's all the dice are leading them towards a valuable piece of information so what i had ruled in my head if i could go back maybe i would change it maybe i wouldn't i don't know is i really wanted to accelerate and and it really was all this all this was building up towards um uh vasili and this is the part that was got a little crazy is i was like vasili is going to go back to the coffin make the coffin maker shop he's going to try and uh, go back to that general area because that's in general where vasili would go uh and then um not knowing where Irina is, and there's a little bit of gray area there for where Irina is versus where uh, 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 Vasily is, and then uh, I don't know. So that's kind of the the gray area there of who's where and where's Irina and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I think I have an idea of what's going to go on because what I've described is they lost track of Vasily and where he's at, right? Um, and Irina is not wrapped up in that. So Irina is going to be released and they're going to find Irina. So the session, sorry, the session ended where they tried to break into the coffin shop and the crystal shop. They got caught by the guards, but they talked their way out of that as well in a very smooth way. And they went into the crystal shop. They went and they, they got to choose between coffin shop and crystal shop. And then they went into the crystal shop, which again, the coffin shop, if you don't know about this whole situation, another spoiler, the coffin shop is the headquarters of everything evil. Uh, there are five or six vampires in the coffin shop. Strahd's headquarters type situation in the coffin shop. Um, that's where Strahd went, was the coffin maker shop. Um, the bones of St. Andrews are located in the coffin maker shop. It's all there. But what I'm going to have happen is I'm going to have them. Uh, they they got to choose between two locations. They opened the coffin maker shop. They looked in, saw a bunch of coffins. And then he left and went to open the, 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 the crystal shop. He opens the crystal shop. And that's when the whole guard thing happened. He, they put out that fire. They go into the crystal shop. They find the thing. They go underground. There's an underground place where all these crystals are. There's ma These crystals are magical. Wait a second. So that's another red herring in a totally another direction that I didn't think I'd be revealing about these crystals. That's a whole other conversation. Um, but they're going to talk to this uh, crystal shop girl at the, down at the, at the bottom of this thing. And that's right into the session. They, were, they, bro they broke in. And oh my gosh, they woke up the, the crystal shop owner. And that's where they, they did not find the right spot. And that's where the session ended. So the session is in a double cliffhanger situation in those two different spots. So yeah. So what's going to happen next time is um, they're going to have to talk their way out of the crystal shop lady to see what's going on there. And then who knows what happens there. But whenever they leave, they're going to run into Irina. And Irina 
is going to have a very different recollection of what happened and all of that. It's going to be very, very, um, uh, very strange. They're going to find Irina. Irina's safe now. Wait, why is she safe? How? Wait, Vasily. Where's Vasily? What? And I purposely want to leave. I don't want to pull the Vasily Estrad card right now. I want to have Vasily be some sort of weird villain that's out in the open. And if it reveals that he's Strahd, then it reveals that he's Strahd and we'll see it happen then. But I don't want to pull that card right now. And so that's what that's going to end up as, as far as my plan is. And then the other group at the, at the church is going to be, I'm trying to get them. I'm trying to, I'm trying to stop them from fighting this demon kid right now. And I'm going to do everything in my power to, um, uh, put that fire out and have them not fight that kid right now, right now. And I just want to reveal that that kid is evil and then let them consolidate because I'm trying to get the group back together. I'm trying to get the group uh, back to the same page so that they can all be together and act together. Because if there's a combat, I, I, I'm I fine with the group being split. I'm fine with the group being split all over the place, but I don't want to have one group have a combat and the other two people just have to sit out. That's not fun. For in, you know what I'm saying? That's not fun. Now, what I would do is I would go back and forth and I would still keep it around and bit bop it, but ah, it's uh, you know what I'm saying? Now, if I was going from one combat to another combat, that might be interesting, you know. But I, I don't want them to fight that demon with only three people. I don't want them to fight five vampires with only two people. You know what I'm saying? It would just, it would be bad, 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 right? They picked two of the biggest fights in the entire city right there. So, that's where that's going to leave off. And I also want to give Irina back to the group to make sure that she's still there with them so that I can uh, uh, arrest Irina with Isaac. Isaac is, that's a whole other plot line. Isaac's going to arrest Irina, and then that's going to be another problem for them to deal with. But right now, they have too many problems. They have too many problems I, uh, in, in a good way, right? There, where There's a lot of stuff that's going on, and I want to kind of bring it back together and then... Together they can solve these problems instead of all of this craziness, uh, which has been really fun and really cool, but I want to bring the group back together. So there's the big picture. Woo, man. Here we go. Wish me luck for next next session because, man, oh, man, it's going to be a doozy. Stay creative. Thanks at the box. Peace.